Well, it's a little bit of an old warrior, this one, but it's still a lovely perch. It took the horn, it fished on a straight retrieve, fishing over the weed. So I was just swimming it back and whenever it was tapping into the weed or getting caught up in it, I'd just pause the horn it and just let it float up above the weed for two or three seconds. And often you'll get takes as the horn it's floating up and that's what this perch did. If you ask any angler around the world to name one Salmo lure, it would probably be the Hornet, because the Hornet is Salmo's best-selling lure. It became very popular in the US with bass anglers, but it's one of those lures that can catch just about anything in fresh water. Pike, perch, chub, zander, asp, walleye in America, panfish, bass, crappie, musky, you name it. It's a fantastic lure that will catch all freshwater predators. The Hornet has become such a popular crankbait because it's available in such a wide range of colours, sizes and floating and sinking options. And today we're at Rib Valley Fishing Lakes in Hertfordshire. There's three lakes here and on two of the lakes you're allowed to lure fish them from October the 1st round to the 30th of March. And today we're going to be fishing both the Rib Lake and the West Mill Lake targeting pike and perch with Salmo Hornets. We're going to be predominantly targeting perch, but any pike will be a bonus as well. And today I'm going to show you how I like to fish the Hornet, different retrieves I like to use, and other little tips that might be able to help you catch more fish when you're out on the water. I'm going to give you a brief overview of the Salmo Hornet range and there are two different types available. So you've got the normal classic style Hornet and the Rattling Hornet which has an internal rattle chamber inside and both are available in a wide range of sizes, colours, floating and sinking options. I'll start with the normal Hornet. So in the smallest sizes they're available in a tiny 2.5 and 3.5 centimetre sizes so these are great for chub, trout, perch, um, if you're fishing in North America small pan fish, crappie uh, and small bass as well. Then they go up in size they jump to the 4 centimetre, 5 centimetre, 6 centimetre sizes and then you get to the 9 centimetre size which is the biggest in the Hornet range. The 9 centimetre sizes are great for pike, um, zander and on the continent I know they even use them for catfish as well so this is also a really good option when fishing for those. In the Rattling Hornet range the smallest size is the new 3.5 centimetre model so again this is great for your smaller species like trout, chub and perch and then they go up in full centimetres from there, so you've got the 4.5 centimetre model, the 5.5 and the 6.5 centimetre models too. And the two biggest sizes are proving really popular for bass anglers in the US and Canada. And they also work really well for walleye, uh, zander over here in Europe and the UK. And they'll catch you a wide variety of other predators as well. Both the Hornets and Rattling Hornets are available in a wide range of colours. So you've got your bright colours like Fire Tiger, Gold, Chartreuse Sexy Shad, which are great for fishing in coloured water, stained water, muddy water, you know, those kind of conditions. And then you've got the more natural colours like Holographic Grey Roach, Holographic Perch and Brown Trout, which are great for fishing on crystal clear venues like Rib Valley. As with all Salmo lures, they come with super sharp hooks, super strong construction, and they work well right out of the box. Anyway, I've given you a bit of an insight into the Salmo Hornet range. Let's get fishing and see if we can catch a few fish on them. Crankbaits are fantastic lures for all predators, perch, chub and especially pike and even when I'm targeting perch and chub I always use a wire trace when I'm, I'm targeting those species because you never know when you're going to hook into a pike and although I have been after perch today, this little jack couldn't resist the, the hornet so um, always use a wire trace, it doesn't have to be a heavy wire trace, I mean on a light spinning outfit like this I tend to use a 
a trace of around 20 pounds and even if you hook into a big pike you know that's going to save you from being bitten off so it's always a good idea to have a trace when you're fishing for any predatory species really. When it comes to searching for fish and covering lots of water, there are a few lures that really beat a crankbait. And they work really well on a straight retrieve, but there are lots of other ways you can fish them as well. So I can cast them out and then simply bring the rod tip down and just wind it back. Now that can work really well in most situations, but often I like to impart a little bit more movement into the crankbait to make it look a little bit more like it's injured. So I'll just give it a twitch or two every now and then. And then I can also pause it, let it float up for two or three seconds before turning the reel handle again and retrieving it back. One of my favorite ways to fish crankbaits is by bouncing them along the bottom. So the Hornet 5 dives to around seven to eight foot. So if I'm casting in around sort of six to seven foot of water, for example, what I'll do is I'll cast out, keep the rod tip down and wind the crankbait back in and then I'll start to feel it bumping along the bottom. So once I start feeling it bump the bottom, I'll just pause it for two or three seconds and let it float back up and away from boulders, snags and that kind of thing before starting to retrieve again until I feel it bouncing along the bottom and then I'll do the same thing again. So pause it for two or three seconds, let it float up away from boulders, snags, and then begin retrieving again. It's almost working like a jig really. So you're bouncing it into the bottom, it's floating back up, bouncing it in, floating up. And often you'll get the takes as the crankbait's floating back up or as you speed it up, as you're diving the crankbait back down again. Now, on many crystal clear gravel pits, just like Rib Valley, although it's October at the moment, they can still be really weedy. So you can fish the crankbait in a similar way, really, to bouncing it along the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll cast out, wind the crankbait down, and as soon as I start to feel any weed, I just pause the lure, let it float back up for two or three seconds, and then give it two or three quickish turns and start to retrieve the lure again. And then once I bump into the weed, I just repeat the process. Just like when I'm banging a crankbait along the bottom, you'll often get takes when the crankbait's floating up over the weed and the fish come and smash it, or as you speed it up after it's been floating, that's often a time when the fish will take a look too. Well, that was pretty awesome. I love it when you watch fish take the lure. Um, I just cast along those weed beds over there and I was just retrieving the hornet, just bouncing it along the bottom. And then there's a little bit of a weed bed down there and I just paused the hornet so I let it float up over that. And then this pike loomed up from behind the weed bed, followed me in and just slammed it. 
It was a really good take, great to watch, and the Hornet's very nicely sitting in the scissors of this pike. So I'm going to unhook it now and we'll get it back. Well, it's turned into a really bright and sunny day and because the big lake at Rib Valley is crystal clear, it's kind of knocked the fishing on the head a little bit. So it's got quite hard this afternoon. So what we've decided to do is move on to the little lake, the West Mill Lake. There's very few pike in here, but there's a really good head of perch and some nice ones too. So you've always got the chance of catching a three pounder out of here. And basically what I'm gonna talk you through now is the different setups that are used for fishing the hornets. So for fishing the bigger hornets, the five centimetre and the six centimetre models, which I've been using on the big lake today, I've been using the Fox Rage Jigger Rod. It's seven foot and it casts 10 to 40 grams. So that's about three eighths of an ounce up to about an ounce and a quarter. And it's got a really pokey tip. So it's great for fishing crankbaits. I've got a 2,500 size prism reel on here, spooled with 15 pound braid and a 20 pound trace tied to the end of that. For fishing the smaller hornets though, the two, three and four centimetre models, this heavier outfit is a little bit too much. You can't really feel the lure working properly. So I've opted for the linear light spin, which is also seven foot and it casts between seven and 21 grams. So that's between a quarter and three quarters of an ounce. And it's great for fishing these tiny crankbaits. There are very few pike in this lake, but I'm still going to use a wire trace even on my light setup because you never know when you're hooking to a pike and it's always best to be on the safe side. I'm hoping we come across a few perch here this afternoon because there's plenty of cover. So, I mean, the water's got a tinge of colour to it and the whole lake's surrounded by plenty of trees and it's got plenty of shade covering the water. So, I'm hopeful we'll catch a few fish, but let's give it a go. The West Mill Lake is quite a lot different to the Rib Lake. It's got a bit more colour to it, and also it's not as weedy either. We're predominantly targeting perch in here because there are very few pike. And because of that, I've decided to go for a slightly different hornet in a slightly different colour. So because the water's a bit stained, there's not as much visibility, I've decided to go for the rattling hornet. So there's a little bit more sound, a bit more vibration for the perch to home in on. And I've also gone for a brighter colour, so this is the 3.5 centimetre model in hot perch, and perch should find it irresistible. The way I'm fishing this smaller rattling hornet is by casting out, lowering the rod tip, and then beginning a slow, steady retrieve. And unlike the bigger hornet that I was using on the rib lake, which as soon as it was hitting the weed, I was pausing it and letting it float up over the weed to prevent it being caught up. If this bangs into the bottom, I can continue reeling it into the bottom to give it more vibration as it bounces off rocks and boulders. But if I hit anything that feels like a big snag, then I can just float it up and over, pause it for two or three seconds, and then start my retrieve again. By bumping the crankbait along the bottom, it gives it even more vibration and a really erratic movement that sometimes perch can't resist. Well, this is one of quite a few perch and pike we've caught today on the hornets and rattling hornets. There's such an effective lure for so many different types of venues, rivers, reservoirs, lakes and gravel pits like we've been fishing today. And they work for so many different freshwater predators as well. And if you haven't used one before, why not give one a swim? And I'm sure you won't be disappointed. Mm -hmm. 